If there's one single area where I've seen consistent failures on the IFR checkride, it's in failure to follow altitude minimums on instrument approaches. The disconnect is in distinguishing between a minimum descent altitude and a decision altitude, and when to use each one. For this reason, I add into my brief on every approach whether the minimum altitude is an MDA, a minimum descent altitude, or a DA, a decision altitude. Let's look at an example to see the difference. This is the ILS, or localizer, approach to runway 33 right at Baltimore. The reason we call it the ILS or loc approach is because we're actually seeing two approaches in one approach plate. If we duplicate the profile view of the approach, we can separate how the approach is depicted for the ILS only and for the localizer only. Here's what just an ILS approach depiction would look like. And notice we're only looking at the ILS minimums at the bottom. And here's the localizer only, but with just those minimums. We'll ignore the circling minimums altogether here. But notice the other small differences between the two. And let's examine each in detail, starting with the ILS. An ILS is flown by starting at an assigned altitude, let's say in this case 3,000 feet, and intercepting the glide slope from below. So when we start, these are the instrument indications with the glide slope needle above center. As we approach duds, the needle starts to fall toward center, indicating that we can descend along the glide slope. We'll keep both the glide slope and localizer needle centered throughout the descent as we get closer to the runway. Now for this approach, the minimum is 333 feet, which because this is an ILS is the decision altitude. What this means is that we will continue the descent to 333 feet and at that point decide if we have the required visual cues to continue to, to descend down to the runway. If we don't, we'll decide to execute the missed approach. Now, here's the thing. Because we've made this decision at 333 feet, as we're executing the mist, we will, by necessity, descend below the decision altitude due to the delay in setting up the climb and just through our own momentum. So here, we momentarily pass below the DA as we start the climb out to the mist. This is right and proper and perfectly allowable when flying a precision approach, or an RNAV approach with vertical guidance such as an LPV. The point of a decision altitude is, as the name suggests, to be a decision point. It doesn't represent a hard minimum. Let's contrast that with the non-precision localizer only version of this approach. Here we have no vertical guidance, so we identify the various fixes on the approach using our DME. Once again, we'll start at 3,000 feet when cleared for the localizer approach. We'll be looking for 12 DME, which indicates the duds fix, when we can descend to our step-down altitude of 2,000 feet. The next fix, Oriole, is the final approach fix, as noted by the Maltese Cross, and is at 5.8 DME. So we'll maintain 2,000 until then, then start the final approach. The next fix is Exeve at 2.5 DME and 940 feet. From Exeve, we'll continue descending down to the minimum descent altitude, MDA, of 540 feet. The word minimum here means that we can't go below until we're in a position to land. The next point, the 1.3 DME, is the visual descent point, as noted by the black triangle. This is where we can make a normal descent to land from the MDA. So if we don't have the runway in sight by then, we should decide to go missed. However, we still need to maintain the minimum altitude of 540 feet all the way and delay actually executing the missed approach until we get to the missed approach point, at which point we can start our climb out. So let's summarize these differences. On the ILS, a precision approach, you decide to go missed at the decision altitude, in this case 333 feet. You're allowed to descend below the DA briefly as you execute the missed approach. On the localizer, a non-precision approach, you could decide to go missed at any time on the approach. The VDP is a good indicator of when to make that decision, since that's the point where you can make a normal descent to land from the MDA. So you can't go below the MDA at any point on the approach, hence the word minimum, in minimum descent altitude. The execution of the mist has to happen at the mist approach point. Let's end with a reading from the instrument ACS, which is the playbook for how your check ride will be evaluated. For the precision approach, you need to maintain no more than a three-quarter scale deflection of the vertical and lateral guidance. So as long as you're on the needles, you're okay, no mention of minimum altitudes.
The non-precision approach standards, on the other hand, require you to maintain the minimum descent altitude with a buffer of plus 100 feet and minus zero feet. In other words, going below the MDA even a little bit can earn you a bust on your check ride. So when they say minimum, they mean it. You do get a 100 foot buffer above the MDA though, so why not use that? Give yourself a bit of cushion. This is a very common item that gives instrument students trouble, so the best antidote I have is to make sure you're clear about the difference between the decision altitude and the minimum descent altitude. And I actually incorporate this piece into my brief, so I'm ready to fly the approach the way it's supposed to be flown. So if it's the localizer approach, I'll say for example, this is a non-precision approach, which means I'll start the final approach at Oriel and descend down to 540 feet, which is the MDA. Make sure you're incorporating this brief on an RNAV approach as well. On an ILS or LOC, it's fairly easy to tell whether you're flying to a DA or an MDA. On a GPS approach, you'll need to know what kind of guidance you're flying. This approach lists different minimums based on different approach guidance. The LPV and LNAV slash VNAV approaches use vertical guidance, so they give decision altitudes of 343 feet and 432 feet. The LNAV approach uses only lateral navigation, so it gives an MDA of 600 feet. You'll know which type you're using by looking at the indication on your GPS unit during the approach. You would also be familiar with your equipment, whether or not it was able to do an LPV approach, for example. Far too often, I've seen pilots descend to the decision altitude for the LPV, which in this case would be 343 feet, when they're doing an LNAV approach and should have stayed at the minimum altitude of 600. So make sure you're briefing these. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles that'll take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.